welcome back with another episode of me and Zelly doing yeah. Our Father by the Spirit May May. Yep. We're very happy to be with you guys again live today. It is a very yes. big blessing. Yes, and it's a so wonderful warm day. Yes, it is. Sun. It is a wonderful warm day today again. Yes, we're and able women, to women, play. Women, 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 women. Yes. So let's pray. Give me your hand. Let's say a prayer. Yep. And then we can start. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Our Father. Our Father. Thank you so much for a wonderful day. I hope that everybody today is f full of happiness and kindness towards each, towards each other. Thank you for letting us be able to do this today. Thank you for all the love that you so freely give unto us. And please be with those who need you most today. Send an angel on their path so they are, they are helped in whatever struggle they have to get through today. Bless everybody in abundance, Lord. I ask this not because we, de we are deserving, but out of the grace of your love. And so it is. So it is. Okay, so you're going to draw yes. a nice picture for us today. And yes, I'm going to do the story. I got a story he says and all his things. You mean Jesus and all his things? Yes, Jesus and all his things. Okay, so draw a beautiful picture of Jesus and I'm going to do the story for us today. Okay. Today's story is called okay. I, I, I Meet Anger with Silence. Okay. Silence always helps. When we hear unhappy words, when someone is mad, when slander comes looking for us, when insult strikes us, when somebody becomes angry, when criticism hurts us, when we hear lies about us, when ignorance accuses us, when pride humiliates us, when vanity provokes us, silence is kindness, is the kindness of forgiveness that doesn't say anything, but waits for time to pass. It is very true. And then the next chapter goes on. It's the same chapter. God's infinite kindness will not let us fall into temptation. But for this to be true, we must make an effort to collaborate somehow with our Father's increasing help. There are laws that have been established for the common good. But if we do not respect them, how can we count on them to protect us? We know that the destructive nature of fire and that it is why we should not misuse it. We cannot pray for divine help if we continue acting unwisely every day. If a person enjoys being lazy, he or she will not attract the blessings that helps those who work hard. If someone lives by throwing thorns in other, other people's faces, how can he or she expect to receive smiles from them? It is dis, dis, indisputable that divine providence will help us at all times to deliver us from evil. However, it hopes to find in us the characteristics of goodwill. We cannot ignore the fact that Heavenly Father is always with us. But many times we are the ones who distance ourselves from Him. We cannot ignore. In order for us not to succumb the blows of temptation, it is vital for us to seek the good and constantly cultivate it. There, cannot, uh, there can be no harvest without first sowing the seeds. Of course, we must expect God to grant us the greatness of love, but we must forget we must not forget that we need to give something of our own efforts, which is very true. We cannot Mommy, expect any Mommy, goodness this, to come into our lives. I, this his hair and this mouth and That everything. is beautiful, Zelly. It's and, and this, this, this his eyes and the zings. It's, okay. it's me leaning and it's and it's beautiful. Okay, just hold on. Okay, so it is very true. We cannot expect goodness and love and kindness to enter into our lives without something of our own efforts. We have to put in an effort to be kind, to be good, to not contribute to all of the this hatred and sadness in the world. To be the silence in, in the chaos is better than saying anything at all, I feel like. There is a beautiful piece 
and Jesus and the home that collaborates with this piece I just I just read to you I would like to read it as well today um, it is um, in the book Jesus in the home yeah uh, chapter 35 the need for understanding okay. one of the disciples had come to the home uh, the home gospel worship with a downcast face in response to the Lord's fraternal questioning he explained that he had uh, been treated disrespectfully on the street. He had asked a number of debtors for payment, but they had responded with ingratitude and sarcasm. Christ did not offer the man any personal advice, but obviously exhorting all the attendees, he narrated uh, benevolently. A great ex ex expositor of the text of Job possessed a unique willingness for endeavors of understanding and kindness. And perhaps because of this, he established a school in which we uh, pontificated the unquestionable wisdom. On one particular occasion, he was helping a troubled student who often complained about how he was mistreated in the town square. Patiently, he went with the student through the streets of Jerusalem, begging for alms for various temple services. The majority of the um, the majority of the passersby either gave or refused to give Do alms with a sense of indifference. Do say magic okay, my love. But on one particular busy corner, a seemingly healthy man answered their plea with harshness and ridicule. The master took the student by the hand, and both of them cautiously continued on their way. They hadn't gone very far when they looked back and... You can't draw on me. Come on. <laughs> Do your picture. Okay. Let me read. Okay. <clears throat> um, they hadn't gone very far when they looked back and saw the man fall to the ground, uh, writhing in violent pain. Everyone rushed to his aid. They soon realized that the... Uh, they soon realized that the irrespicable brother was suffering from deadly colic. They continued on their way. When they came across a gentleman who didn't even stoop to respond to their question, uh, request, he merely gave them a hard and ran, uh, rancorous stare. Teacher and ward followed him, and when the strange character reached his home, they saw that a small group of weeping people were waiting for him and that he joined them in copious tears. The two of them leaned that the unfortunate man ha learned that the unfortunate man had come home to a dead daughter. They continued begging in the street and were soon cast by a young man whom they had asked for alms. Expectantly, they withdrew away, uh, uh, drew away and after half an hour of observing him, they realized that the wretched man was merely insane. They then heard outrageous words from an old man who was pr uh, promising them uh, prison and stoning. But after some time, they found out that the poor man was simply a bankrupt businessman who had gone from master to slave because of his enormous debt. As the day was coming to a close, the respectable teacher invited the disciple to head back to school with him and asked, Did you learn the lesson? Ex accept the need for understanding as a holy commandment in life. Never again will you complain about those who display expressions of rebelliousness or despair in, in the streets. The first one who we came to was an ordinary ill man. The second one had a, a, a death in his house. The third was insane and the fourth one had gone bankrupt. In most cases, those who treat us with disdain are following a path that is even darker and thornier than our own. And completing the lesson, the Lord concluded before the amazed disciples. Whenever we meet up with the bearers of affliction, we must show mercy and help them to regain inner peace. The bull still has horns because it has not yet received the gift yeah, of wings. Yeah, that is <laughs> We commonly complain about the sheep that is bothering our repose by uh, bleating in terror, but we rarely remember that the poor animal is under a heavy, heavy noose on its own to the slaughterhouse, which is very true. You know, 
this goes so well with today's story of our father because we how quickly sometimes we can judge other people for how they treat us but we don't know their story what they're going through what their hardships is that's why treat anger with silence is the best method if you look at it because if somebody is angry towards you or hateful or disrespectful meeting them with silence or just leaving everything and anything alone um because you don't know what is causing that hardship and that sadness in them that is that is causing them to burst out at you so it's not your fault we we, we tend to take everything personally and onto ourselves but we forget that everybody has their own struggles every day that they go through deaths and bankruptcy and hunger and and the stresses of daily life is always upon us so treat anger with silence yeah. it is the best method and the story of, in Jesus in the home just collaborates so perfectly with that I feel like it is it is a match made in heaven. Um, Rita de Cassia, hi friend, how are you? I hi, hope you're Cassia. well. Say Rita. Hi Rita. Hi Rita. Hope you are well, friend. Welcome to everybody that can join us this morning. We are very blessed to be here. Zelia, are you almost done with your picture to show us today? Yep. Okay. And I hope everybody is doing very well. I feel like the story is also very important because um, of the situation and the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in today all, all, all around the world. It's not like just one place that is suffering. Um, a, lo a lot of people are actually suffering from those things that they mentioned in that book. Um, whether a family member dies of COVID or cancer or just a, another illness coming home to that or knowing that somebody that you love is sick, um, bankruptcy and um, going going broke right now is a very bad thing people are losing their jobs and there's a lot of negativity but in the positive there's so many positive things that's coming from all of this and we can be the light that shines positivity on everybody so i feel like keeping ourselves and our mentality as positive as possible and whatever whoever treats you with disrespect or anger be the light that shows them you're not you're not going to you know react. Yep. Give love. Give love wherever you go. Yeah. Or treat it with silence. It. Respectful silence. Of course there is a disrespectful silence and a respectful silence. Let's be the little light that shines. I know we can sing this little light of mine. Are we going to? Okay, let's sing. Let's sing, Zelly. This little light, light of mine, mine, I'm gonna let, let it shine. It shine. This little light, light of mine, mine I'm gonna light. let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you, Zelly. Okay, so we can show your picture now because we're almost no, done. I, I, I am not done yet. Okay, well then we'll put it up for everybody to see you later, okay? Just show what, what you you have done already. Okay. Let's just show what, what you have done already that's before we go. Not done. Just show them what that you've done. That is that, so pretty. That, that is God right there. And all the animals and plants and flowers around him. Yes, and, and that's the rain. And the morning, and the dark, and everything. That is beautiful, Zelly. Congrat! That is just beautiful. You can finish this. Okay. Let's just say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. Thank you all for joining us. Lots of love and hugs, and we'll see you again next next Sunday. Okay, Zelly, come say bye. Bye. bye, -bye.